Hey guys, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my overview on the Odin Battle Challenge that was available at the North American Fan Festival in Las Vegas. This fight put 8 adventurers up against a special version of Odin to fight for an awesome I Beat Odin t-shirt. Now, I will let you guys know how the fight goes and give you a general idea of how it was beaten. So first of all, the encounter had several special rules that those of us at the Fan Festival had to abide by. The first rule was that this fight must be done with 2 tanks, 2 healers, and 4 DPS. The DPS had the option to switch to summoner, but the Warrior, Paladin, White Mage, and Scholar were all mandatory in the party setup. Every character was outfitted in item level 100 gear and supplied food and cross class abilities. Some jobs were not accuracy capped when in front of Odin, and in fact two limit breaks were reported as quote unquote missing by various groups. Everyone was given 2-5 to five minutes to set up their hotbars and settings however they wanted to. And finally, the instance had a time limit of 15 minutes, which if you were quick, was enough for 2 full attempts. With the special rules out of the way, let's discuss Odin's phases and abilities. TLDR for those of you not interested in the nitty gritty, just silence Ain't Harriar, stun Hall of Stone, kill Gungnir's, dodge AoEs, and DPS hard at the end. It's not too difficult of a fight. The battle against Odin had three separate phases. The first phase lasts from when you engage Odin until 55% of his HP. The second phase will take place from 54% until 15% of his HP, and the final phase will take place from 15% until death. Additionally, Odin has an enrage timer of 7 minutes, so you will need to kill him in less than that time. If you would like to check out Odin's abilities for a specific phase, Please click the phase you'd like to jump to on the video now. First, let's discuss phase 1 of the encounter. In this phase, Odin has a ton of different AoE effects. Your goal in this phase is to deal with these various AoEs while dealing as much damage as possible. We will list Odin's abilities one by one and highlight them on the video. So first of all, Odin's auto attacks on the tank will deal roughly 1000 damage per hit. Odin also has a cleave attack that he will perform on the main tank called Sangital that will deal roughly 3 to 4 thousand damage before mitigations. For this reason, keep Odin faced away from the party, and when you see him casting this ability, pop a defensive cooldown if you are tanking him. In case you were wondering, this attack can be parried and blocked. Now while we are talking about what the tanks will be dealing with, it is worth noting that this fight only required a single tank. Therefore, whoever your off tank is should go full DPS. From this point on, all of Odin's attacks are various AoEs with different debilitating effects. The first one is Valknut. This attack is an AoE around Odin that will hit for around 3000 damage. Everyone in melee range should dodge this attack every time it is performed. His next attack is Hall of Sorrow which Odin will occasionally cast to deal about a thousand unavoidable damage to everyone in the party. Next is Hall of Lead. This attack will target two to three party members who are out of melee range and hit them with an instant AoE that will deal about 1100 damage to whoever it targets, plus anyone standing near that person. It is recommended that all ranged DPS and healers spread out to avoid overlapping with each other and taking additional damage. Also, anyone hit by Hall of Lead will receive a slow debuff that reduces your global cooldown and cast times for 10 seconds. Healers should Asuna and leech this off ASAP. Hall of Stone is Odin's next attack. When Odin begins casting this, AoE circles will appear around several players. If a player is hit by Hall of Stone, they will take a moderate amount of damage and be petrified for 10 seconds. As Odin's HP drops, more and more players will be targeted by Hall of Stone and multiple AoEs may appear around the same player in sequence. Now while Odin is usually immune to stuns, this attack is actually vulnerable to being stunned and therefore should be. Odin's final AoE is called Gangrath. This AoE will be designated by several untargetable spears appearing along the outer wall of the arena. After a short delay, these spears will cast a line AoE across the battlefield. If you are hit by this attack, it will deal about a thousand damage and knock you back. I will quickly show the different patterns this attack can come in on the video now.
That marks the end of Odin's Phase 1 abilities. Now, let's move on to discussing the second phase of the encounter. This phase will take place from 54% until 15% of Odin's hit points. Odin will retain all of his attacks from Phase 1 and use them in conjunction with his new attacks. Odin's first new attack is Ein Heriar, which he will cast as soon as Phase 2 starts and be performed roughly every 60 to 65 seconds after that. If he finishes casting this attack, he will deal about 1500 damage to everyone in the party and place a damage over time on them that deals about 250 damage every 3 seconds for 30 seconds. This attack can and should be silenced. If for any reason it goes unsilenced, healers should assume the dot off as quickly as possible before Odin does his next new attack. His other new attack is Gungnir. When this attack is coming out, three players other than the main tank will receive a giant AoE circle around their characters. After a short delay, a Gungnir will drop in the location of wherever those three players were and deal AoE damage to anyone within its initial AoE. After that, three Gungnirs will spawn. As long as even a single Gungnir is alive, the entire party will take 450 damage every three seconds, so it's recommended to kill these as quickly as possible. Odin will perform Hall of Sorrow as soon as Gungnirs land, so the AoE damage here can be very high if people also get hit by the Gungnirs. Additionally, Odin will still be using all of his usual attacks while the Gungnirs are alive. Just in case he performs Ein Heriar while Gungnirs are alive, it may be wise to have your Bard Focus target him or simply use a Paladin main tank to silence it. Odin will use these attacks in conjunction with all of his Phase 1 attacks until he hits 15%. At 15%, Odin will go into his final phase. During this phase, he will stop attacking the party entirely and run to the center of the room. Once there, he will begin casting Shin Zantetsuken. If Odin is not killed before he finishes performing this ability, he will instantly wipe the party. This is a DPS race, so everyone, including tanks and healers, should go into maximum damage modes and push him down for the kill. Here are a few useful tips for this last phase. First, save your melee limit break for this phase if you can. Whether it's tier 2 or tier 3, it's gonna help. Two, there is a chance you may enter this phase with Gungnirs alive. If you do, have the White Mage Divine Seal plus Medica 2 and then switch to Cleric Stance and do as much damage as possible. And three, keep in mind that Shin San Tetsuken has a very long animation after it finishes casting. So even if the ability's cast bar is finished, don't give up you can still kill him before the animation finishes. And that's my overview of the Odin Battle Challenge from the North American Fan Festival. It was fun, yet it was a simple fight. So if you're going to the London Fan Festival this coming weekend, hopefully you can pick up the win and get that shirt no problem. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Be sure to check out some of my more recent videos for coverage of the North American Fan Festival. And until next time, take care.